In this project, we will numerically validate the data obtained by the paper named a characteristic correlation for heat transfer over serrated fin tubes. In this slide, you can see that we have extracted the figure 1 of the paper, which shows the schematic of the model used in the paper. Now, in this model, there is a tube with a certain length, in the direction of which several rows of fins are placed around the tube. So there is a tube with several rows of steel fins in the general model. In this simulation, only part of this model is modeled using symmetric boundary condition. The open air flow with a temperature of 313.15 Kelvin and a velocity according to the defined Reynolds value, and it moves towards the tube fins and performs the heat transfer process. It is assumed that the inner wall of the pipe has a constant temperature boundary condition equal to 473.15 Kelvin. The purpose of this work is to investigate the heat transfer process and the cooling rate of the serrated fin tube in different Reynolds numbers. In this slide, you can see that we have extracted the figure 6 of the paper, which shows the nusselt number data for different Reynolds numbers, and we are going to validate this graph. The current model is designed in three dimensions using DESA Modeler software. The model includes a shallow rectangular area as a spatial area for free air flow around the serrated fin tube. Also, a tube with fins located on its outer wall is defined inside this airflow space. The number of fins of which is 24 and they are drawn smoothly and without angles. Since the model is exactly symmetrical, the modeling is done using symmetry boundary condition. The meshing of the present model has been done using ANSYS meshing software. The mesh type is structured and the element number is equal to 356,240. Under the general setup tab, you can see different buttons from scales to units. By clicking on the scale, a new window will appear showing you the dominant extents of your geometry. Also, under the view length, view length unit section, you can see the default geometry units, which is meter in this project. Also, under the scaling section, uh, uh, under the mesh was created in, you can change the settings uh, in order to activate the scaling factors beneath that. For example, your geometry and mesh was is designed in a software which uh, its default unit was millimeters. By activating these scaling factors, you can change this factor to your desired factors in order to set the length to the appropriate unit. By clicking on check button, uh, you will see that under the console tab, the Fluid software will start to check your mesh for any errors. Uh, also, by clicking on report quality, again in the console tab, the Fluent software will, uh, will give you the quality report for your mesh. For example, you can see the maximum aspect ratio of your mesh, uh, maximum orthogonal quality, and etc. By clicking on display button, a new window will appear, which you can see different part, parts of your geometry. Now in the appear window, which shows you the names of the different parts of your geometry, you can click and select each part and then click on display uh, so that the software will show you that part. Now in this project, there are several assumptions taken into account to simplify the problem. The first one is that the type of our solver is set to be pressure based since we are dealing with uncompressible flow. As for the velocity formulation, we have selected absolute form of formulation. And as for the time study, we have selected a steady time study since we didn't want our results to be a function of time. As you can see, after double clicking on the energy button in the appeared box, we have enabled the energy equation since we want to uh, account for the, for the temperature changes in our computational domain. Now, if you click on the viscous button in the appeared window, you can see that we have selected the RNGK epsilon model, just like the paper. Now, under the materials, if you expand the solid section, you will see that steel material has been defined for the fins. 
in order to add a new material, you just have to right click on the solid and then select new button. In the appeared window, you either can define a new material by defining its properties as yourself or you can click on Fluent Database to select from the list of materials available in the Fluent software. If you click on Fluent Database in the appeared window, if you change the material type from fluid to solid, then in the new list, you can select a steel material. Now if you click on the inlet boundary, you can see that the type of this boundary is defined to be velocity inlet. Uh, also by clicking on edit button, a new window will appear in which you can change the settings for this boundary. In the appeared window, in front of the velocity magnitude section, you can see that we have defined this specific value for velocity which refers to the Reynolds almost equal to 5000. Also if you click on the thermal tab, you can see the temperature of the airflow entering this boundary. Uh, if you click on the edit button for the outlet boundary, which is a pressure outlet boundary, you can see that under the momentum tab, the gauge pressure defined for this boundary is equal to zero, which means that the air exits this computational domain to the atmosphere. Now, if you click on the heat wall boundary and then click on edit in the appeared window under the thermal tab, uh, you can see that the thermal condition of temperature has been defined with the temperature value of 473.15. Now this boundary refers to the inner wall of the pipe and as the paper is stated, this wall has a temperature of 200 degrees centigrade. Now if you click on wall fin flow boundary, which is the fin boundaries, if you click on edit in the appeared window under the momentum tab, you can see that the wall motion has been defined to be a stationary wall and the shear condition of no slip has been defined. Thermal condition of this wall, you can see that the coupled thermal condition has been defined, which means that this wall is uh, in contact with the fluid on its both sides. After double clicking on the method, you will see that a new window will appear showing you the pressure velocity coupling. Also, you, will, you can see that uh, the spatial discretization methods are shown in this window. Also, you can change the discretization into other formats like you can change them into first order advent and the other options available for each variable under their combo list. And for the simple pressure velocity coupling, uh, the simple algorithm is kind of an iterative solver which uses a relationship between velocity and pressure correction to enforce mass conservation and to obtain the pressure field. We may also change the under relaxation factor. These factors may be between 0 and 1. Based on the simulation and the project we are doing, we may change these under relaxation factors. But remember that the values set in here are the recommended values for the pro project and we highly recommend you to not change these values. There are two ways to check that your uh, simulation process have reached convergence. Alongside the checking the residuals reaching and nearing the zero, you may define some report to make sure that an equation have reached convergence. For example, by just right-clicking on the report definition, going on the new, you are able to choose between different reports. For example, you can define a mass flow rate report on a arbitrary boundary based on your geometry and your simulation. You are able to see whether this mass flow has reached a constant value or not. If yes, it may be a sign that your simulation has reached convergence but the residual must be checked as well. After double clicking on the residuals button, a new window will appear. In the appear window, you can see the absolute criteria for equations like continuity, x velocity, y velocity, and so on. Now, when you set the software to start the simulation, there would be error between each iteration. Now, if that error is less than these criterion, uh, it conveys the meaning that uh, that equation has reached convergence.
After double clicking on the initialization button, a new window will appear showing you different methods of initialization, hybrid and standard. Now in the standard initialization method, you get to choose the first amounts and values for the first iteration of the simulation progress. These values refer to the values used in the first iteration of the simulation progress and if you choose the values for each parameter wisely, your simulation progress will finish sooner. It should be mentioned that you can also choose the first values and in, or the initial values by just clicking on the compute from drop down list and clicking on one boundary. For example, by clicking on compute from all zones, the software will automatically average the values in different zones and boundaries and put those values in the initial values for the software. After double clicking on the wrong calculations button in the appeared section under the parameters part by just defining the number of iterations and then clicking on calculate button the software will start the simulation process. In order to extract a 2D contour, we first have to define a plane. In order to do that, we right click on the surfaces and then select a uh, new ISO surface. In the appeared window, under the surface of constant, we select mesh and Z coordinates. After that, under the ISO value section, we enter the value of 0 and click on save. Now in order to extract the contour, we right click on contours button and then select new. In the appeared window under the contours of section, we select our desired variable. For example, in this slide we have selected the velocity variable. After that, under the surface of section, we select our defined plane, which would be the ISO surface of Z coordinate 9. And after that, we click on save or display button, the software will show you the 2D contour. Now in this slide you can see the velocity contour for Reynolds number almost equal to 5000 and you can easily compare this contour with the contour presented in the paper. Now in order to extract another contour, uh, you just have to change the velocity variable to temperature. Uh, after that, just like the previous slides, by clicking on the save or display button, the software will show you the 2D contour of temperature. Now in this slide you can see the temperature distribution uh, around the fins and you can easily see the changes of air temperature after passing over the fins. In order to extract the pressure contours, just like the previous step, you just have to change the variable from temperature to pressure. Uh, again, by clicking on Save or Display button, the software will show you the pressure distribution inside our computational domain. Easily see the pressure distribution in our computational domain, and you can compare this contour with the contour presented in the paper. Now, in order to calculate the Nusselt number for this project, we have to do two things first. The first one is to calculate an average temperature for our project, and the second one is to define a reference length in order to calculate the Nusselt number correctly. To calculate the average temperature, we first right click on report definition, go over the new, go over re volume report and uh, select volume average. In the appeared window under the field variable section, we change the pressure to temperature since we want to calculate an average temperature inside our computational domain. After that, under the sections, we select the flow zone and click on OK. After calculating the average temperature, we select this temperature and copy it. Then we go and double click on the reference values button. In the appear window, we paste this value of average temperature uh, in front of the temperature section. As was mentioned in previous slides about changing the reference length in order to calculate the Nusselt number correctly, we change the length from 1 to 0 0.04 meter 
which is the diameter of the pipe. After that, we again right click on report definitions, go over new and go over surface report and select area weighted average. Now in the appear window under the field variable section, we select wall fluxes and we select surface nozzle number after that. Under the surfaces section, we select the wall surface. By clicking on compute button, the software will give you the nozzle number for this pipe and its fins. And finally, in this slide, you can see that for Reynolds number almost equal to 5000, we have calculated the nozzle number to be equal to 19.6365. And if you calculate the error for this value, you can see that the error of 3% uh, exists between our data and the data obtained by the paper. Finally, a summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. To benefit from Mr. CFD services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com.